Hello, and thank you for joining us this morning. I'm sorry that I can't be there with you in person, but uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to still share this experience with you virtually. Uh, I understand I'm first to kick off this panel discussion, and I'll be honest, I never imagined that one day I'd be talking about something titled POI to dissertation, uh, but here we are. <laughs> so let's get started uh, with a quick introduction. Uh, my name is M. Shea. I'm faculty over at Los Angeles City College, and my journey in higher education began in community college with these guys, uh, Josh and Jay Edwards, who you are so lucky to be next to right now. Um, and my time at Mount Sac on the forensics team had a great impact um, on me. Uh, and ultimately, it helped me to decide on a career path, uh, and that was to be in higher education. Uh, and I transferred to CSU Fullerton for my bachelor's, and then I went to CSU Long Beach for my master's, and then I was fortunate enough to get hired right away out of grad school and start teaching for a few years uh, before I, I landed a full-time gig at LACC where a few years into that, I had the opportunity to serve as department chair. And it was during that time that I just gained a whole new perspective of higher education, um, my role in it. And I was going through these personal and professional changes and, and um, decided that I wanted to go back into the classroom as a student. And so I went to CSU LA to earn my doctorate uh, in their EDD program. And the uh, dissertation that I was interested in completing was titled Rehumanizing the Classroom, an Inquiry into Narrative Action Research. So the purpose was to examine the process of storying and the sense making that occurs between faculty, myself, and the students in my courses. It was a qualitative study that used narrative inquiry and action research principles. Um, I mentioned earlier that I was going through these personal professional changes and that was really, that's, that, that was the impetus for this research um, because I, I had this revelation that the classroom space and the given interactions because of it must be humanized in order for authentic and compassionate learning to occur. And I had a strong desire to try to cultivate compassion and try to promote perspective taking. And I was doing this mainly through storytelling um, and storying the curriculum. Uh, uh, storying is the process of engaging in emotional truths uh, for the purpose of sharing it with an audience. Um, so this study allowed me to engage in deep reflexive practice. And with that came some really interesting findings. Uh, stories were described as insightful and refreshing for the classroom experience. Folks were inspired by each other's stories and they felt a sort of comfort as they saw them themselves in each other's stories. And the storytellers were, they were described as courageous um, through accepting the the call to reveal emotional truths, they cultivated compassion uh, for themselves, for others, including myself. Uh, but with this compassion came feelings of confliction, particularly for me. Um, the issue I was dealing with was how I negotiate encouraging story and grading story. Uh, I think of it similar to this, like judging a forensics round of POI, let's say, and the tell-all confessional and all its details and, 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 and is, is unlikely to get the one if the organization of content and even the performance is questionably problematic, right? Um, so the implications for practice was that storying is a method of practice that we should and uh, could employ. Um, because it cultivates compassion and compassion is necessary to resist the status quo. Uh, and it is our responsibility if we aim to be transformative uh, intellectuals. Um, part of my transformative journey was the awakening that I had that 
um, I had regarding my role in the classroom. You know, I, I, I didn't want to be punitive about compliance in a space that was supposed to be about liberation. Um, so my views of the classroom uh, was renewed. <laughs> so consequently, the study also highlighted other variables uh, that were impacted by storying that had less to do with relational building and relational maintenance and more to do with institutional obligations. And so negotiating how to evaluate the process of storying is something that's worth exploring. That leads us to the point of this panel. <laughs> um, this was taken at NCA 2015, where we were embracing opportunities in the Palazzo. I think that's where these pictures were taken. Now, it was my last year of writing the dissertation, and I vented a lot to these guys. <laughs> and I shared that I felt like I was putting together this massive POI. And I think that's how this panel idea started. We were reflecting on our friendship and our history, and we were discussing our experiences with forensics and how the training prepared us for the dissertation. Uh, and so I'd like to share with you the first insight, which has to do with practice or the question, what am I doing? Uh, this is a picture one afternoon after looking over my findings and trying to figure out how to put it together in my chapter four. I remember having to put together a POI for the first time. My topic was on drag king culture and the performance of masculinity. And I copied down specific sections of the various things I had read. Uh, lines and paragraphs that I liked, just like I was instructed to do. And I printed it out and cut it up and I fit it into my black book pages and I brought it to the team room and I waited, I waited for my coaching appointment uh, because I didn't yet understand how to put the various pieces into an order that made sense. And like the POA fairy that my coach was, he came by and he grabbed the pieces and he placed them on the desk and he started to shuffle them strategically into this order that made sense. And then he looked at it and said, try this and then left. And uh, that motion, um, that physical movement of piecing together multiple texts really left an imprint in, in my brain. Um, it was like this intertextual puzzle where you uh, unlocked a possibility of performance if done just right. Um, it's how I understood how to create a program, and it's how I try to teach the cutting and arranging of text for performance. Um, so naturally, my POI process became my dissertation process. Um, and the second insight has to do with the why, or, or the why am I doing this? Um, this is a picture that was taken at City Tales. It's a show that I started and host every semester where I invite students, faculty, staff, and alumni to come share a story around a theme for the purpose of community engagement. Forensics as a co-curricular activity um, becomes personal sport. It's a personal sport. It, it, it becomes that way at some point, right? Like it's an activity where students take part in speech-related events, um, and they get to contribute to society's discourse and be a part of shaping the discourse on any given topic. And POI, I think, is an event that easily lends itself to the latter. My most memorable POI was my most personal, um, as, you know, as it related to my lived experience. And fast forward well over a decade later, well, when it came time to decide on a research focus for my dissertation, um, at the time, uh, my day job reality included an attempt to create community through storytelling. Uh, I, was, I was excited to, to do my part in establishing more connections on campus, more connections in the classroom, and the act of speaking your truth in a semi-constructed way is bold, vulnerable, and exactly what we need sometimes. And I wanted to examine the process of doing what I did at work uh, because I thought that the problem um, of practice that we needed to address 
in our institution was the lack of community and authentic connection across campus in the classroom. Um, so this positionality of self in study is evident in how I approached uh, POI and how I chose to approach the dissertation. The, the dissertation is essentially a persuasive document, right? And the POI is typically thought of as a persuasive interp event. So these problems or these, these, um, these platforms of problematizing and advocating um, work well together. Finally, the last insight deals with pedagogy or the, the how, the action. How does this work uh, transfer into practice? Now, I didn't write a thesis when I was in grad school. I chose comps. So my familiarity with the task of writing a dissertation came from my experience of putting together POIs, frankly. Um, around the time of my dissertation, I realized how I could convey the relevance of learning a skill like cutting and arranging text uh, to my students in my oral interpretation class uh, and even forensic students. I, I find myself talking about the dissertation process with them and I explained that what they're doing with the POI is essentially the practice that I'm applying in my, my, my doctorate program. Um, and for me, the dissertation process felt capable because I understood uh, arrangement of text and sacrifice of text. And in my attempt to validate the learning of a skill like how to cut and arrange text for impact, I tell students that the dissertation is uh, this very process. And so if you can do this, right, cutting the POI, you can earn the highest degree. Oh, that's my little motivational speech for them. Um, now, the reality is in practice, I struggle. I struggle with this concept very much. Um, as we speak, students enrolled in my oral interpretation class are trying to put together their POIs and enough of them are struggling uh, to produce an interwoven collage of text. It's not clicking for them yet. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a little frustrating. Our, our purpose in the classroom is to inform, it's to inspire, but it's also to equip them, you know, equip our students with the tools to succeed. And the challenge that I have right now is how do I teach it effectively? Uh, so in conclusion, my greatest takeaway after having some time to revisit this dissertation journey is the need to clarify how to build programs of interpretation. Um, you know, I, I don't recall ever actually learning how to put together a POI. I, I picked up tips here and there, observations, trial and error. Um, it wasn't until a few years ago that I came across a video by the Speech Equity Project that broke down the arrangement process that I realized, oh, there's so much more details that could be provided all at once. <laughs> um, and it's still very much a challenge to convey these ideas, um, you know, especially in our Zoom era, um, teaching the arrangement of texts in person was a lot easier because I was actually able to show them that physical manipulation and to move the text with them. Um, but now, you know, I, 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 I can't do that as easily. Um, fortunately, I came across this program called Flippity uh, that I hope to use right away because it, it provides that visual movement of text that I think could help um, with, with learning how to put uh, pieces together in a cohesive way. Um, and, and, you know, just like how I learned through practice, uh, I think that's how students need to learn it. They need to learn by doing. Um, uh, and I think that's why the Irvine Valley project, um, uh, of multiple speeches in a given semester for a public speaking class is so well received by some, because it gives students the practice that they need. 
anyway, I, I want to thank you again, and I look forward to uh, being with you in the Q&A.